if it tells you we're recording. Okay, great. I'll share my screen. All right, are you able to see category yep. vision? Okay, great. Um, so usability testing, we can start here. Uh, is that fine or do you want to start on the other one? No, let's start on usability testing. That's the more important one for me today. All right. So usability testing is, yeah, like validating that the thing is usable. Um, so that's kind of like in a design sense. Uh, and our, I think our main customer for, that, for this uh, area so far is, <coughs> is our internal designers and designers at other companies. It's a really, really interesting area because there aren't necessarily a lot of tools in the market that are supporting de designers. But at the same time, designers are becoming much more important all the time and research is becoming important. And um, supporting that naturally within the GitLab ecosystem makes a ton of sense. Part of it, of course, is the, um, um, the, uh, the actual like setting up of the testing environments and running tools and doing that sort of thing. But it's also really interesting things like the visual review tool, which was implemented recently, um, that lets you attach to a review app and then provide feedback in an anonymous way back to the merge request, which is going beyond some of the other testing areas that we have where it just runs tests and then shows the results in different views. Um, this is kind of more engaging in an interesting way with designer workflows that are built into the product. Um, there's also the, um, I can't remember what it's called because I haven't used it yet, but there's the design workspace or whatever. Uh, I think if we open an issue, we can go look at one maybe, uh, or at least remember what it's called. Yeah, there's this designs uh, tab in here, um, which we don't have, we don't interact with in any way at the moment, <coughs> but maybe there's, you know, something here as well um, that we could interact with in the usability testing area. Yep. So um, there's an issue list. The overall vision will link back to the um, CICD. Oh, th this was something uh, that we should update. Um, I think there's a comment. Um, a a anyway, it, it, I'll follow up with you on that afterwards. It's, uh, it's nothing related to this. Then we have our UX research epic uh, where different things come up. Uh, as you mentioned before the call, there isn't a ton of items in here uh, yet um, because we've sort of just released this as a new feature. If we look at um, milestone due date, uh, what you'll see is that we're pretty actively working on it. So in 12.4, 5, 6, 7, we've got steps that are moving this forward. Um, and one of the cool things that's a nice sign to see is that um, we're seeing some popularity on some of these items. Um, so it's a new feature. Well, this is, this is an older one, but like um, removing the client auth authentication. We've got three uploads from people in there. And for a brand new feature that just came out, that's actually been really hard to engage with until we've released some of these uh, improvements. Um, seeing this kind of engagement is a really, really great sign. Um, so your backlog is small, 14 items, so that's something that you can go through and be familiar with every single item in there. Um, up next is uh, simplifying the usage, which um, we released this feature, like I said, maybe it was a couple months ago, uh, and there were some usability problems with it, um, where you had to hard code the merge request ID inside of the branch um, that you were deploying, and um, you also had to uh, log in and um, uh, or like paste your pat token inside of a dialog and um, it was all just a little bit sketchy and didn't quite work right. It was great to prove the feature is out, uh, but um, it wasn't really possible. Like we tried in two releases, I think, to get it working on www.gitlab.com and we could, just couldn't get even it working. Um, so these usability improvements, authorization improvements, simplify the feature. We can add more complexity later and um, this will at least get us using it. It would be a really great milestone if in like 12.5, for example, we used visual reviews to review the monthly release blog post, uh, mm -hmm. for example, that would be, that would be super cool. Um, it says what we're doing next is the visual review app MVC styling and usability. Um, but I know that there's things in 12.4 that we're doing. Um, maybe this was just rewritten to be in the perspective of 12, as if 12.4 had already happened. Um, but since 12.4 hasn't shipped, um, what this should say is we're doing next is the, um, uh, the things that are going to be in 12.4, which is the improving the way authorization works. Um, not a big deal, but um, just to call it out. Okay. Um, 
And then, yeah, uh, it looks like there's uh, some styling and other issues that, are, that will be good to fix as well and make sure that it's easy to use. And um, especially if we're gonna start using it internally, it needs to like actually work and not have confusing flows. Um, maturity plan, uh, it's at the minimal level. We just released it. Um, getting it to viable is the most important thing that we can do, which is what all those things that we're doing over the next few releases are. Improve UX for visual review tools taking screenshots uh, and embedding those in your comments and adding full screen annotations is another interesting one um, where you are able to like arbitrarily add arrows text over a full screen image. And this is maybe one that could be interesting to play with the design uh, area that we were looking at earlier. So wanted to ask today um, about the maturity plan. So those three items are there. They're starting to be better scoped. Um, who yeah. makes the call or how do we make that call of moving the maturity? Um, like when these three things are done and we feel like they're working well and are being used, um, who makes that call of moving the maturity level for this category to viable? Uh, you do. Uh, mm -hmm. And we can, we can do that together, but you own that. You own this area. You um, set the maturity plan. When you achieve the maturity plan, you move your category forward and um, yeah, yeah, you, you ultimately own that. Um, cool. But we, we can work together to make sure that that's as good a plan as it can be. Um, there is more guidance coming out. I actually have a tab open in my other browser that's, um, I think some more maturity guidance just came out about like how we go from, like what it means to be at each one, how, um, uh, um, you know, how you know, the things, the kinds of things you need to do to move from one to the other. Um, so that guidance will be also helpful in, in determining. But right now it's actually pretty ad hoc and it's um, info relatively informal and is based on your instinct as a product manager, talking to your customers and seeing adoption and things like that. And um, it's more of a guide for you yourself to, to understand, well, and for your customers to understand where you see this. Um, and there's different kinds of users who are going to adopt things at minimal versus viable versus complete and, mm -hmm. and so on. Uh, so it's, um, it helps us to move things forward, but it also helps our customers to know, um, depending on what their appetite is for um, new partial features, like uh, when they can get on board. Okay. And then for the maturity plan items here in the vision, um, wanted to talk about what kind of experimentation or validation did we do to identify this visual review tool and some of these features within it um, as the um, right thing? Yeah, good question. I actually wasn't the product manager for CI at the time this feature was conceived, so I don't know. Um, but uh, it involved our designers, and I would be surprised if it, it's like a feature by designers for designers. Uh, yeah. So I would be surprised if there wasn't like a pretty good design process that went into this. Um, and in fact, the feature is nice, so I can tell that something went into it. Um, it would be maybe interesting to look at the original issue that implemented it. Uh, and uh, see what some of the discussions were. Maybe even reach out to some of those folks and ask, you know, what was the thinking? Where's the long-term vision here? Some of it may have been captured in here. Some of it may not. Um, but um, yeah, unfortunately, I personally don't know. Okay, I'll follow up with um, Brendan and some of those folks and from the original issue then. Yeah, Sarah oh. also. Um, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. As mentioned in. Um, the other, uh, at the beginning of the call, there aren't a ton of products out there on the market that do this, that are especially, especially that are big and, and clearly successful. Uh, Marker.io um, does some of this um, and has a really nice interface and is, where, is, is partially where we were inspired. Um, but uh, it would be good to, to do a little bit more exploration here, maybe even reach out to some, <clears throat> some of our senior design folks at the company uh, <clears throat> excuse me, and ask where they're seeing this evolve in the market, because I think it is an area that's rapidly evolving. And we have an opportunity to lead here as well. Yeah, it's not surprising that we don't have top customer success sales issues, top customer issues. It's not really on their radar now. Um, yeah, I don't know if we have any customers that are really design oriented or, or or um, prospects that are really design oriented, like a company like um, you know Apple, or like um, companies that are just you know like super design brand oriented, might be interesting to talk to you about this kind of feature because they may be interested in purchasing, purchasing GitLab as part of like 
you know, a cultural rollout of like thinking about design and building that into your workflows and things like that. And that's re that really is, again, I'm t touching on it again, but like the most powerful thing here is how this feature integrates with the rest of GitLab and supports a design way of thinking um, in the software development process. And looking at um, these three items here, the top customer success, customer and internal customer, how do we mm -hmm. usually as a product team think about priority of um, those uh, as they are differ and as based on where we're at in the maturity model? Like a lot of the time when something is minimal, we're primarily the customer for the feature. Um, yeah. But as that evolves, like is there a historical model uh, for thinking about prioritizing yeah. internal versus mm -hmm. customer success issues? Yeah, so there's the product development flow and all of the stuff that comes with that. There's also the sensing mechanisms page, uh, which has like uh, the different kinds of things you can think about and how you might um, relatively prioritize those with each other. Um, but yeah, for a minimal new category, this is often like really light. For If you look at a big uh, category like CI, there's um, labels that sales is adding. There's labels that customer success is adding. Customer, top customer issue really comes from like upvotes and issues. And um, so um, this stuff becomes like way more clear and like you'll have a whole list of issues that are like the top 10, one of the top 10 CS issues that are out there that are, you know, driving calls and confusion. Uh, and then sales will definitely reach out and tell you like, I want to sell this thing, but it's not quite working. I need you to do X so that I can sell it properly. Um, but that will come uh, as the adoption comes. For now, um, we need to be thinking about like the go-to-market for this thing and like, um, well, the very first thing we need to do is, is really get it to viable. Um, we can potentially find an early adopter. We can be our own early adopter uh, for lack of a, another one. Uh, but once we get it to viable, we can really start thinking about, okay, how do we get this in front of our customers that uh, are going to adopt it and give us feedback and grow the feature with us? Um, that might be an interesting thing to build some guidance on in the handbook as well. Like, not just what the different maturity levels mean, but like how you should be thinking about go to market at each of the different maturity levels. Yeah. <clears throat> so many of my categories in that planned or just minimal stage, yeah. that's probably something I'll be thinking a lot about. So, yeah, it's exciting. I mean, depending on the kind of products you like to work with, um, if you're like, entrepreneurial and you like launching products, like you're in basically the dream dream zone of yeah. uh, GitLab. <laughs> Your entire group is doing nothing but the launching new products or in future areas. <laughs> it is super exciting. <laughs> well, um, visual regression testing, looks like our internal team is asking, asking for that. Um, ah, yeah, this is an interesting one as well. Um, this could potentially fit in other categories as well. I'm not 100% sure. This is a strange issue that's, oh, okay. The link is to the old uh, issue. Hmm. Um, so that link just needs to be updated. It's not a big deal. Um, so uh, yeah, this has some interesting interesting content, content in it. It's not necessarily 100% usability testing, uh, although I can see why it was uh, grouped in there, but th yeah, this is like automatically checking to make sure that things aren't moving around and colors aren't changing. And, um, hmm. Yeah, interesting. Um, just, this I think would also be kind of related to some of the automated accessibility testing that um, you've got another category for that. Yep, I was just gonna say this sounds a lot like that automated accessibility. Yeah, different kinds of tests, but like the same sort of framework. Um, yeah, same sort of concept. There's kind of a theme there in a lot of the categories, um, especially in code quality, where there's a lot of um, discussion and the issues around checking for uh, regression and failing a pipeline if the regression occurs or being able to set a threshold for it. Um, so yeah. I wonder if it's, this has similar themes in it as well of automate or automatically checking that something hadn't regressed. Yeah, and maybe this is like a better title for this one might be something like built-in support for uh, usability regression testing. Yeah. And then it would more clearly align into usability because, uh, or maybe that's kind of what visual means here, but um, I think there could be visual bugs that are not usability bugs that, that, are, that are regressions. But yeah, I think you're right. Like every testing category probably has regressions as a thing to monitor and treat as a special kind of case. Whether it's unit or functional or integration or performance, you can have regressions for all of those kinds of things. Cool. 
and then for the vision, um, manual review flow for review apps. Um, this, I think, is the thing we delivered. <laughs> uh, so, um, yeah, I think that this is just a pointer to an old issue, uh, to the epic. Uh, so maybe if we look in this epic, we'll see that all, a lot of the items are done. Uh, I, okay, I, I see what, what it is. So, um, yeah, that, that, this is fine. Uh, that this, this is this way. It was just a, a surprise to me. Um, normally, it would be a link to a specific issue that moves the vision forward, but linking to an epic is totally fine as well. Uh, and yeah, this is just saying that for usability testing, we need to move the new visual review tool forward, which is true. Uh, and then beyond this, we can look at mobile solutions like uh, Headspin.io. Yeah, I don't know what this is. We should make it a link, <laughs> so I don't have to yeah. do this. <laughs> mm, uh, yeah, mobile, I don't know what this is actually. Usability, automated usability testing for mobile? Or is it just, I don't see usability on the page, but uh, anyway. Um, something interesting to look at. Mobile is, in general, uh, for a category, something we want to try and do more and more to support. Um, looking at different things in CI and different areas, uh, how we can improve how our stuff works for, for mobile. Okay. That's, that's nice to see in there. Um, yeah, and then let's uh, take a look at accessibility, or A11Y, <laughs> as people tend to call it. Um, okay, accessibility testing is also um, another area where um, there's a lot of like kind of focus in the market right now on improving. Um, there's a pretty nice um, uh, automated testing framework out there. The, it's the A11Y machine, if I remember right, is what it's called. Uh, and it's open source and we can potentially integrate it. Um, so uh, this is another category that um, we can launch and potentially have a quick win and do just like we do code, uh, code quality, we can just give you free accessibility testing uh, for almost any kind of um, you know, language that we might be building and just give you that for free in your pipeline and show you the results. Um, it's a great thing to do. Uh, we have a uh, broken link here that we should fix. Um, yeah, I think the backlog for this is even, even smaller. Yeah, this one's um, pretty tiny. Yeah, it's a, basically a new idea, which is continuous accessibility testing and automated 11, A11 way of scanning of review apps. Um, yeah, it's basically like try to do the thing for the first time is the two issues that we have. Uh, so, um, and that's, that's where a new category is stuck. Um, and the funny thing is all of these issues that are referred to in the different sections are going to be pointing to one of those two issues. Um, so there's probably not too much to explore in here. Um, yeah, competitors are kind of doing the same thing. Like, oh yeah, Pally is the other, or PA11Y is the other one. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, there's not really too much to cover here other than uh, we should prioritize like grabbing one of these um, open source things and seeing if we, if it supports a decent number of languages, like if we can just integrate it and then show the results uh, for free. Um, and so digging in on languages a little bit, I've been looking but I haven't found um, like a list of top languages across the gitlab.com instance. Or... Uh, um, yeah, I mean, um, I don't know what that list would be, but we, we could probably find it. Um, but I would just go by like, uh, there's other lists out there like top reference on Stack Overflow or just like other lists of popular languages. Um, and go by that. Uh, try to cover the big, un big ones like um, uh, Objective-C and Swift, uh, if you can, um, Java for Android and then for all the Java stuff, and then um, .NET, um, C, C++, probably forgetting something obvious. Um, go, Python. Um, yeah, Go, Python, yeah. Ruby, the, those languages. Like, those are going to be on the top of like, basically any list that you pick. Uh, and probably whatever other ones I'm forgetting. And um, that, just try to cap, catch as many of those as you can. Um, sure. The um, open source testing frameworks often have the same goals, like code climates, list of languages, 
Like they want to support the most popular languages, so they often, you'll find that they often do. Uh, but um, but yeah, we have to have to do some research and make a good choice as to which one we want to go with. Cool. Or we can support multiple as well. Okay. Yeah, and thought about using kind of a proxy metric like Stack Overflow. That's a good idea. Yeah, there, there's lists out there, but it, it is the obvious ones like so Windows development, iOS development, uh, Android development, and Linux development. Um, hit those ones. Yep. <laughs> the top ones on the list. <laughs> nice. Um, yep. So I wanted to dig in just a little bit on accessibility specifically and why this didn't just become an issue or a set of issues in the usability category. Why, why was this broken out as a separate category? Um, it is different. Um, usability is about um, more a um, ease of use uh, for a regular user, where accessibility is about bringing, ensuring that it's usable as well, but for um, people with different kinds of uh, disabilities abilities or whatever who are not able to interact in normal ways. Um, so um, yeah, it's, a, it's different enough um, that it, yeah, sort of has some of the same terminology and the same sort of testing, um, but is, uh, has its own tools and has its own um, results and its own prioritization. And um, that's the reason why. OK. That makes sense. Just going to look over my list of questions. Yeah. Accessibility is just a nice one overall to support because you're doing good, you know, for people, yeah. uh, which is always nice. Um, yeah, you're doing well, you're doing good things for an underserved community. Uh, and it's, it's nice where we can do that. Cool. Well, I think we covered all of my questions um, for the two categories today. Okay, well, I'll stop the recording. Thanks, James. Thanks, Jason.